Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. This is going to be a slightly different video than the usual ones because I have a photo shoot coming up with my Skyrim Daedric armor which means that I'll need to make some repairs on it. But I guess just watching me repair some stuff might get a tiny bit boring so I figured that I would also revise the 20 questions thing that was going around last year but we upgraded it to 21 questions. So I've got my list of questions. I guess let's start repairing. There are some stuff that needs some serious repairs as in constructive repairs. And there is a pile of stuff that only needs painting repairs. So we'll start with the constructing things and then in the end we can just paint everything in one go. First of all, I've got one of the front flaps, which has all these details on the front and some of them are getting a bit loose so i'm going to repair these with super glue however i am a mess with super glue so i grabbed a piece of throwaway paper that i can put underneath to make sure that i don't leak super glue all over my table so the first question on my list is what is your favorite genre of costuming this is a question that you can interpret quite widely uh, i guess that the favorite thing for me to make costumes for is larp because it's that nice combination of having a guideline, aka the LARP that you're going to, but still creative freedom to do whatever you want. But you have a starting point compared to, well, completely original costumes where you have to think up everything. That doesn't really work for me. Genre itself? That's a hard decision between fantasy and sci-fi, I guess. I like fantasy just for the looks, and sci-fi, I don't know, I like the incorporation of t technology into, well, normal day wear or something like that. As you have also maybe seen in my previous video talking about the cyberpunk. I guess cyberpunk and sci-fi have some overlap. That's basically the thing that I love about it. Hmm, let's see. Ah, there is one more. Um, the second question is, what got you into costuming? Well, for me that's cosplay. In secondary school I got quite hooked on anime and through online searching I found out that there were conventions, anime conventions. I was really looking forward to going uh, to those. After I finally went to my first convention I was hooked and I really decided that I needed to get a costume for my second convention. So that's how I got into costuming in general and then when I started studying there were people at my student association who were like well, you like cosplay, you know, you might actually like LARP as well. You know what? We're going to drag you to a LARP that we frequent. Um, you're going to like this. So that's how I sold my soul to LARP. I think that was all of these small things. It's not a lot, but I mean, I don't want to have a loose piece get snagged on something and tear off completely. Uh, the rest of this is all sewed on so that that will stay on. It's just these decoration things that were super glued on. So, uh, on to the next part, which will involve heat gun. The entire armor doesn't actually need that much repair things, it will mostly be painting stuff. But the second thing that we'll be repairing is this tip that broke off, which is a piece of warbler. So I have a tiny scrap piece of warbler, which I will be heating up and then attaching. The heat gun is going to make some sound, so I guess I'll just skip over that. The next question is, what are your favorite materials to work with? That's also a difficult one. I mean, I love Warbla for how versatile it is. Um, but in the last year or so, I have also started to get a full love for leather, which is also, again, a material that I like because it's so versatile. And yeah, especially because I do, I have so many different crafts that I do, I guess. Um, it's the versatile materials that I like more because, well, I can use them in more crafts. I'm also heating up this side to make sure that it will actually stick to it. No, I guess it's the more versatile materials that I like. I do so many different crafts and it's the versatile ones that I can use in more and multiple crafts. So I guess leather and warbler, yeah. And also leather, it's, it's a material that's relatively expensive to work with, but it's actually less difficult to work with than I anticipated and also I love the smell of leather and that's a giant plus of actually working with it. 
that's a nice tip again. Now I can just let this cool down and then I'll paint it when I paint the rest. And the very last repair bit is for my axe. It's missing one of the screws on well, the handle. As you can see, the rest is also in a dire need of a paint job, but this one is completely missing. For this, we're not going to use Warbla, but we're going to use Friendly Plastic, which is sort of similar in working with it. It's just that it comes in a pellet form. So for all of these screws, I know I used two pellets. And even though the pellets are in different size, it means that the screws do end up in different sizes, but that doesn't really matter. I mean, they were originally hand in the game. You would say that they would be hand forged anyway, so they're, they can be slightly different from one another. I put two pellets in my cup. Now I can heat them up and shape to actually make the screw. The handy thing about these is that they turn translucent when they're warm. So they're warm now and I have to let them cool down a tiny bit because otherwise I'll burn my fingers. So that's a good moment to check the next question. Who taught you your craft? For the props and everything, I am self-taught with help of the internet, of course. But for sewing, pretty much everything I know, or at least the basics, I learned from my grandma. She was an actual seamstress. She taught me the basics in the way that the basics should be taught, I guess. As in, I had to redo a lot of stuff. She was also a sewing teacher, so she was used to teaching other people stuff. And even though, well, my lessons, I guess, were a bit more casual than the ones that she gave to, well, her students, I still had to do everything the proper way. But unfortunately, she passed away three, maybe four years ago now. And that's the moment when I got into more complicated and well, more historical stuff. She gave me pointers on my first corset, but she did not get to see it finished. Basically, all of the experience stuff I had to teach myself again. But right now I have the wonderful help of fellow costume friends. Well, they know a lot. <laughs> so um, thanks to all of you, you're a great help. Let's see, the next question is a what do you prefer question. It's drape, draft or commercial patterns. I guess my answer to this is somewhere between draft and commercial patterns. I can't draft patterns completely from scratch, but I like to grab commercial patterns and alter them. I know enough of what a pattern should look like now to, can, to see how I can alter it to fit what I want. Most cosplays I grab a normal commercial pattern and alter it. Now that the screw is finished, as in we have a sort of screw looking thing, I can grab the super glue again and we can glue it on. So we can put on a tiny dab of super glue. I see that I made the other screws flatter than this one, but sure. And this can then again be added to the paint pile and we can start painting. I'm going to give everything a coat of silver first and then later I can dry brush everything with black. Now let's see, where were we with the questions? Are you team cut or team trace? For me, that is definitely Team Trace. In this case, the question talks about whether you cut your patterns out or whether you trace your pattern patterns on a new piece of paper. But for me, that's definitely trace them out on a piece of paper. That's because, well, then your patterns are way more reusable. You can trace it and then later on, if you need to make it in a different size or occasionally some pattern pieces also have a part A and a part B in the same pattern piece. And that just makes it a lot easier if you trace everything. So yeah, definitely trace. And this has its first layer of silver. I know it looks completely different in color. We'll fix that later when we add the black. This means that I'm going to move on to the next piece. This is a piece that I put on my upper legs. Some of the tips are missing the color. So I'm just going to add some more color to that. And let's see, the next question is, what skill would you still like to learn? I'm really someone who prefers to just pick up projects and learn whatever skills are needed for that. 
But I guess something that I've been working on lately that I still do want to learn is to do proper makeup. The weird thing is I know how to do special effects makeup, I know how to work with latex, I know how to work with face paint, all that sort of stuff, but I hardly know how eyeliner works. Um, <laughs> so in a way I guess that is a skill that I still want to learn and well that I am currently sort of working on. YouTube is a good excuse to finally play with makeup. Yeah, this piece is only minor parts. I mean, this here also needs a bit of touch up, but that can be done with just the black. On to the next part. What I've got here is the other un underarm. This one did not have its piece broken off, but it does need a tip of paint. So we can add that. Um, let's see. What is the most unconventional material you've worked with? I usually just grab everything that's on hand. That might mean that I use paper towels for special effects makeup. I guess in some way latex is an, it's not necessarily an unconventional material, but I've made unconventional stuff with it. I mean, look at Weave S. Oh, um, I might know something. Googly eyes. I use googly eyes quite a lot. Not in this Skyrim armor, but I have used it in Karanthir. Some of the rivets on the lower legs of Karanthir, googly eyes. Googly eyes work perfect to just stick them on there, paint them silver, and no one will know that they're not screws. I have also used googly eyes in Weaves, but then I cut out the back part, removed the, well, the pupil basically, and painted the inside red. That's how I made the hive kind of looking eyes. I used googly eyes for that because, well, it was pretty much what I needed. I guess that's, that's what you could call an unconventional material. Other than that, I just make unconventional stuff with more conventional materials. When I started out, uh, it was mostly wood, PVC pipe, all that sort of stuff. I've now moved on to fancier materials, but yeah. That's it, I guess, for this underarm. Then we have a piece which is, in all honesty, my favorite piece of the entire costume, the shin guard, with its detachable lowering. What I love about this is the way it closes. It's functional and <laughs> I don't manage to do that all that often. But this also has a few places where it needs some paint. Although I guess that this I can immediately paint with black. So that doesn't need any paint for now. But I had to reattach this spike. So there is some parts here that might need a new coat of paint. And with that, we get the question, what era or genre would you still like to make a costume of? I mean, the Regency dress that I made was the very first dress I've ever made. I have never made a dress before. And in that way, it's not necessarily a specific era that I still want to make a dress of, but I do really want to make a bustle dress someday. I think I just think it's it would be a fun project. It would definitely be a long and difficult project, but I do think it would be a fun one. But I still got enough other stuff to do, so it's somewhere in the back of my mind. Um, on my maybe I'll ever get to this list. On to the next. Somehow, except for the underarms, it has only been one of the two doubles that needed repairs. I also have one hand that needs repairs because my thumb has has the pain scratched off quite badly. And with that, we get the question, what's your favorite tool to use? I guess that's one that I'll just have to grab. My favorite tool is actually quite a simple one. It's this semi blunt awl. It's very multi-purpose. I mean, with Warbler, I have used it to scratch in stuff while it was still warm. I can poke stuff for buttonholes. You just need something to scratch with quite often. And that's what this is perfect for. Also to peel threads out of somewhere if you don't feel like grabbing your seam ripper. A simple awl. It's, it's just such a handy tool to have. I think that's interesting that apparently a lot of people, their favorite tool is quite a simple one. Yep, that's it for the hand. It's mainly this side piece of the thumb. One of the shoes needs quite a big area covered, which is not that weird. With all the walking, there's just a lot of stuff that rubs against each other. So it has needed a new coat of paint quite often already. Um, and with that, we get the question, has the pandemic changed what you sew or how you craft? In my case, I'd answer that with a yes. 
it, it did. It's the combination of the pandemic and starting YouTube because before, well, the pandemic, I had an event or I, I had something every single weekend. I had to purposefully block days in my agenda that I would not plan anything there so I could just chill out for a day. The pandemic has changed that, of course, and now I have all these weekends at home, so my craft just go a lot faster. That in combination with YouTube and trying to release a video every other week, well, it has basically sped up my crafting. And other than that, YouTube has also made it uh, that I don't necessarily need a specific purpose for a costume. Up until now, I only made costumes if I had specific events or things to wear them to. But now, I mean, especially with the cyberpunk, I'm just making it because it seems fun. And I have not done that before. My costumes always had a specific event in mind uh, that they were made for. For example, we Vest and Carantier were supposed to be done spring last year for Elfia Herzevens, which in hindsight is maybe a good thing that did not happen costume wise which gave me more time considering that I have only finished it in November or that would have had to be a giant rush job um, and it probably wouldn't have looked as pretty as it does now. Also I'm mostly stippling this on here compared to well just painting uh, to prevent streaks from happening. There we go. Shoe finished. The front breastplate doesn't have that much places where it the warbler itself needs to paint, it's mostly just the screws that need a dab of paint. I'm also going through the questions quite fast compared to what I would have anticipated because of course I still have to do all the black and currently we're on question 14 already so there are seven left uh, which means that I should maybe keep those for painting black. There we go. And all that remains is the axe, which is also going to be the most work because, well, it's simply, it has the most edges and quite a lot of them are foam instead of warbla and the paint will chip off quite a bit faster on foam than on warbla. But first of all, we can paint the screw that we just put on. What did you learn in the past year that you are most proud of? I guess that that would be, oh, hand sewing. Before this year, before I started basically any project this year, I had hardly done any hand sewing ever. Mainly finishing up seams or other small bits, but never a lot of long seam hand sewing or any fancy stitches. I knew a running stitch and the back stitch pillow stitch that was basically it but this year well first of all I've been picking up a lot more historical projects which already involve quite a bit more hand sewing but I've also purposely picked up a few tailoring pieces like the green blouse that I made pretty much when the pandemic started and the waistcoat that I'm still working on I picked those specifically to work on tailoring techniques and Hand sewing is a big one in that. Currently, I might even be getting handy at some of them. I'm picking up speed. <laughs> For all these foam parts that are chipping off, I'm trying to just put the tiniest bit of paint on there. The reason is I did not fix the foam. The foam is still dented. Um, I don't mind that. I mean, it adds to the weathering of the axe in general. It's just that I want to hide the black color of the foam underneath. Now there are parts here that I prefer to touch up with black, so I'm not going to do those right now, but there are some more points here that can need another bit of silver. The axe now has all of its silver painted up as well, so we'll let this dry, which means that I won't continue on this right now. I also need to give my back a rest because I cannot sit and paint for a long while. So we will probably do all of the black next weekend, still in this video, but for me next weekend. Um, but there is one more thing I'd like to show you today, because one of the questions is how many pieces are in your UFO bin? You know what? 
let's see and count. So my craft room, I still have to do a proper craft room tour I guess because my craft room has a walk-in closet. The storage drawers here should have my UFOs in it. Nope, it's not this one. Yep, it's this one. Let's see how many UFOs do we have. There was a time where I made plushies and these are I think about four leftover mini sushi plushies. I mean here's the nigiri for around the sushi and I still have some shrimp I think. Yeah. So uh, do we count this as one UFO? Yes please. Um, one. I have a blouse with a nice tie on a uh, collar that only needs 26 buttons added or more as in it even has the fancy sleeve cuffs and everything and all that's needed is buttons but yeah it's been in here for i think four years then we have a pair of pants that i actually finished it's actually boy swim trunks but i had i changed them so they were normal trousers for me but unfortunately one of the rings came loose yeah there it is so that has been in my repair pile for i don't want to know how long i think i know what that is and if it is yes this is my very first non-costume project ever it's a gorgeous blue silk this is a scrap piece it is a it's an under things top and all that's needed the straps added and the lace at the bottom but yeah this has been in my ufo pile for eight years and the last thing is a generic tank top in a funny print that i could finish in an afternoon but somehow i didn't like the print halfway anymore so i just never finished it uh, no idea how long this has been in, in here. Might have been five years or so. So yeah, that means that to answer the question How many pieces are in your UFO pile? One, two, three, four, five. Five things. That's not even that bad. Maybe I should just finish, finish these someday. But oh well, that's what UFOs are for. So it is exactly a week later and we can continue painting the Skyrim armor. Today we'll be doing well all the black bits, so basically the weathering. And well, meanwhile I'll continue through the list of 21 questions. Um, now that we're also talking about well stuff in the past year and everything, I'm also learning more about makeup and everything. Um, I painted my nails in like the first time ever. I'm 26 yet I'm learning so much about this, it's fun. <laughs> Anyway, today we will be mostly working with black, so let's grab some black paint. That will be the most important color today. This one was nearest to me, so let's just start with this. This is one of the upper leg plates. And I believe we did some of the tips. And I will also be adding some black to these parts. For this, I will also grab a piece of toilet paper. Because what I will be doing is mostly a sort of dry brushing thing. Basically what we will be doing is grabbing a tiny bit of black paint, dabbing that on top of all of the silver that we painted and then we wipe it off again. Warbla is textured so the black will stay in the cracks but it will be rubbed off the top and that way you get the nice weathering effect. But this silver is rather silver so I might need to add some more black to blend it in a bit better. And in this case, it will look somewhat like this. And then we also have these tips where the paint didn't rub off that much. So I didn't need to add a new piece of silver, but just a bit of black is enough for that. And with that, I guess we can go to the next question. What's the most satisfying technique you work with? Um, that's actually a really difficult question because I do so many different things. I guess in a way it is this one, um, working or well, weathering is one of the things that just finishes a costume. So weathering techniques are always high on my list of favorite techniques. But sewing wise, I think become really fond of the catch stitch. It's 
one of those hand stitches where you can still keep movement in a garment or the two pieces of fabric that you put together, but they're still stuck to each other and it's a fun stitch to do. So I guess catch stitch is also somewhere there. Before I go on to another technique that I really like to do, I think we finished this one. So let me continue to the lower arm. There we go. This is the lower arm and we put on a new tip. So we'll have to, well, blacken this up so color wise it matches with the rest. But another technique I love doing is making molds. Uh, so for special effects makeup, I love making silicone molds in which you can cast the latex. It's, I don't know, working with silicone is somehow really satisfying. I mean, it's stuff that sticks to hardly anything, but yet does stick really well to itself if it's still wet. Because this tip was so, so very silver, we might need to do a few coats of this black. I mean, it doesn't really matter if there's a slight color difference. I don't mind slight color differences because in stuff like this, it adds to the whole thing. But I don't want it to really stand out that much. I guess that blends in pretty well. I made some more repairs off camera during this week because I noticed that this thing was actually rather loose. So I stuck this back on and there was still something that I didn't like with this seam, so I changed that around a bit. It did mean that I got some more bubbles in this uh, breastplate part, because if I heat this up again, the paint that's on here will bubble. And you won't be able to get it perfectly flat anymore, but I guess this is sort of okay. So I'll have to paint this and do some painting here. And with that, we get to the next question, which is, do you pick a project and then get the materials or do you collect materials and let them speak to you? <laughs> well, this is a fun question because I mostly do cosplay and LARP, which means that I have specific things I make costumes for. So in my case, I pick the materials to fit my costume. Even with the cyberpunk thing that I just released my f first video of, I always think about the costume first and then get my materials. I'm also really good at only buying the materials that I need. I already have so much stuff. I don't have place for materials that I might or might not use. So in general, I just buy stuff whenever I need it. So I don't really often have that I let materials speak to me. I work from looking up a project first and then picking out the materials. This way, there's just a darker splotch there. It blends in well because it could be just an extra bit of dirt. Then we get to the next bit that did not need any repairs, but it will need some black paint, which is the helmet. Helmets are an interesting thing for me. I'm not really good at making them. This thing is absolutely not comfortable, but I do love the way it looks. So I guess in cosplay wise, that's all that counts. And I can just take it off whenever no photos are taken. I can actually see reasonably well through it because this is just pantyhose. Yeah, the helmet was one of the reasons why I really wanted to make this armor in the first place because it is so lovely and spiky. For the next question we have, um, what are your goals or plans moving forward? That's always an interesting one. Personally, I craft just because I want to keep my hands bu busy and I don't really have a strict plan for it. Although I have been saying for quite a few years, if I somehow in one way or another can make the hobby pay for itself, that would be awesome. I don't see myself making a living of this full time. I can't do for too long because then my back and neck will hurt really bad. I just take very long making my costumes and in no way would that ever be profitable. Uh, I'll just continue crafting what I love to craft and that's also basically doing whatever I love to do. So that's what you can see on this channel. One day it's historical, the next day it's cyberpunk and then it's historical cyberpunk. But yeah, cosplay, LARP, everything basically. Though I am thinking about doing more informative stuff as well. Over the past year I've been doing more talks and stuff like that, instructing people how to work with Warbler, and I noticed that I really like that. So that's something that I do want to do more often, just informative stuff as well. Just like the um, 
video where I just tried to see if you can actually use a hairdryer on Warbler. That, that was so much fun to film. Which leads us to the next question. Do you use scissors or rotary blades? This question of, is of course specific to fabric and I don't own rotary blades. So my answer is really simple, scissors. And that's it for the helmet. That means that we have one thing left to paint, which is of course the big one. <laughs> It's the axe. The axe needs quite a bit of black paint because there, are, there were also areas that did not need silver paint that do also need black paint. Because I had a lot of all of this weird texture is friendly plastic and Warblad doesn't hold paint very well. You definitely need a base coat under it. But friendly plastic is even worse with that. If you have friendly plastic with paint over it and you scratch it in any way the paint will rub off. Also all of the screws and rivets they're all friendly plastic so there is quite a bit of touch up. There is one question that I will answer after I'm done painting. That's the question whether I have any sewing assistants um, aka pets. But for that I guess I'll just take you on a tour. And then the very last question already is what do you like to watch or listen to while you're crafting? When I'm doing hand sewing, I love watching series, which, well, or TV programs, I guess. Last year, when mostly when hand sewing the Regency dress or the stays, something like that, I have been binge watching Gardener's World. We moved to this house two years ago, and finally this year, the garden is far enough that I can actually start putting plants in there so I've been binge watching gardener shows like Gardener's World to well, get ideas for the garden and tips on how to actually start a vegetable garden because that's on my wish list for ages. The other option, usually when I'm working at this table, is that I just put on music and I listen to my Spotify playlists, which is an interesting mix. It's usually metal, female power metal, ridiculous power metal, um, I love bands like Glory Hammer, Illstorm, that sort of stuff, Dragon Force. But I also, well, my favorite band, what used to be band, I guess, is Daft Punk. They ended it recently. That was actually the first time when I really got sad about hearing something like that. In general, my music can go always. I also like to listen to folk music. Oh, Disney music <laughs> should be there. And just like that, from a distance, no one will see the difference between what I just painted and what had been painted before. Which means that we are done repairing the Skyrim armor. For the next question, we will be taking a break from my painting table. Because the next question is, do you have any sewing assistants, aka pets? Considering my pets don't just walk into the room, let me bring you to the pets. So for our little sewing helpers, they live in these terraria. There's one pair terrarium. And this is Sneaky, who pretends to be a very sneaky snake. But fills majorly at that. Because, no, I totally have no idea where he is. He's currently on his heat mat. Let's see if we can show him a bit. Hey, Sneaky! Sneaky's a ball python. He has been in some of my previous videos because he's really easy to handle and he's just the calmest snake there is. He's adorable. Let's just put you back to sleep. There you go. He's currently on his heat mat. So this is the warm side of his terrarium and that's the cold side of his terrarium. And usually at night he sleeps on the warm side. Then for our second snake, we go down there. This is actually the snake that we have had the shortest. He came with us uh, earlier, well, late last year. And uh, this is Icarus. Icarus is a carpet python. So he is a tree dwelling species, which is why his terrarium is more set up in height. And at night he likes to chill in that corner. And during the day he usually likes to chill in that corner. 
at the time of recording it's still morning so that's why all the snakes are still in their night or sleeping locations just like our last snake that I'm going to show you except that well this is Snorris terrarium Snor is a boa constrictor and all boa constrictors have this nice little mustache on their lip which is why we call her Snor but she likes to hang out in usually that big log over there and I don't think she has woken up yet so that means that I'll have to wait a bit and maybe she'll show herself somewhere later today Snor did decide to show herself later in the day so here she is her eyes are blue because she's about to go into shed. That's completely normal. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me answer these 21 questions and see you guys next time.